let's take a look at a rather shonky looking electrical test probe and this thing is odd because I don't know if it's based on a, another product but they've basically just stuffed a circuit board inside this and it's not on any carrier rails it's just literally wobbling and rotating inside very strange however this is an electrical test probe and it's rated from 3 to 36 volts I have tested it against the fluke uh, and the results were impressive it was accurate within 0.1 of a volt of the flux reading across the full range. So I've connected the black to the red lead, the red to the black lead, that's the black connector because that's just how this thing is configured. Fortunately, it does have reverse polarity protection, but I'm going to turn the light off and I'll show you basically what this looks like because otherwise it's going to look a wee bit flickery. Actually, you know, it's not bad. It is not bad. I don't think I need to turn the light off. It could do with a, a red barrel here or a bit of red photo material, but other than that, it's not bad. The flickeriness... And the oddness of the flickeriness is because this appears to be a tri-state rated, a tri-state tri uh, driven display. It's uh, Charlie Plexed, which is quite an odd way of driving it. Watch what happens when I connect the polarity wrong. You connect the polarity wrong, and all that happens is a bright green LED lights to show that it's wrong. It would have been better if it was red to show it's wrong and green to show it's right, but they've got that LED the wrong way around. Let me open this up very easy. Unscrew the end. It's got a little metal plate in here on this. Strangely, I mean, it's pleasing. I'm not sure what this cable is. It's bizarre. It's very translucent and, and sort of like candy-like. Strange. But here's the circuit board module. Very easy to get out. So for that reason, I have jumped straight into actually taking a picture of the back and reverse engineering it in advance because it was so easy to get out and that saves a bit of time. It came with a plastic film across the front that's used to seal the front um, while they're actually making it. They inject the resin and then they just leave the film on that stops the resin basically just dribbling out the end. Let me show you the circuit board. That is a good idea here. Here's the back of the circuit board. I shall just zoom out just a tiny bit here. I shall also focus down onto that. That's better. So looking at the circuit board, we have the chip that does everything. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six pins going to that display. That is all. It's not like a standard multiplex display. There is a number on the side of it. 2381S-7 or 2381S-7. I only found one seller of that, well, only one reference to it, and it was uh, the, is it, what is the name of that website, uh, Badoop or something like that, the, the Chinese uh, website that's like AliExpress, but for Chinese people, and uh, it's not one I really use very much, so I don't really, can't really remember the name of it. But anyway, there was a reference, no data sheet, it just said, hey, we've got these displays and that was it. However, it it has six pins, and Charlie Plexing is a way that you can switch the pins both positive and negative. So this thing must be limiting the current as well as switching the pins alternately. Neg negative and pl negative and positive. Yes, negative and positive. Uh, but also it can leave them floating. And by using just six pins, you can address a huge number of LEDs. Literally, six uh, times six minus one, so five, gives it can drive 30 LEDs. So this display has um, the... Seven segment display, so it's got effectively eight with the decimal point, it's got eight, eight times three, 24 LEDs. So it fits nicely in with those six pins. The circuitry the polarity indicator LED is in series with a massively high 10k LED, and it's just a simple dual polarity LED. It's very sensitive, it's extremely bright, which is good because that is quite a high value of resistor. But keep in mind, this is designed to operate from three to 36 volts. I only tested it up to 35, partly because it's got a little 3.3 volt regulator here, and uh, that would be pushing it, I think, to actually take this up beyond 35 volts. However, the circuitry looks like this. There is a polarity protection diode, but before the polarity protection diode, there is a resistive divider, a 20k resistor and a 1k resistor, but this looks as though it may be designed for a potentiometer so they could actually fine-tune it, but they've just used a fixed value here, and that goes to the input to the uh, chip. We've got the power going to the regulator that regulates it to the 3.3 volts and the decoupling capacitor across the chip. That's fundamentally it. It's not even... It starts operating at less than uh, 3 volts, 
and is still accurate, even though it's not even reached the regulation point of that regulator. Um, and there's a diode between the output of the regulator and the input of the regulator. I'm not sure why that is. Let me show you the schematic. You can chime in if you can work out what they've put this diode here for. So here's the incoming supply. There's the red-green uh, bipolar LED with its 10K resistor. We've got the sense input going over to the potential divider that then provides a lower voltage reference to the microcontroller or indeed a dedicated meter chip. There's a possibility it is a dedicated meter chip specifically designed for use with that display. The accuracy is outstanding. Really, it is so accurate. It was really impressive. There's the polarity protection diode. There's the regulator. There's the decoupling capacitor, which I'm going to guess, based on the readings that I took on it, even though it was in parallel the circuitry is going to be roughly 100 nanofarad. And there's this diode. Now, I've seen that diode used in the past for ensuring a fast reset of the low voltage side when the power goes off because the another a load in the power side will basically shunt via that diode and take it down to zero volts quite quickly. But that doesn't happen with this polarity protection diode. Is this for leakage polarity protection or something? I really don't know why that diode's there. Um, but let me know in the comments if you can work out what that is. And then fundamentally, that is it. You know, there's not, not much to it. It is just basically a simple, minimalist, low component count uh, voltage meter, which makes me think really it is probably going to be the same chip and module found in a standard low voltage LED display module. But that's it. The strange cobbled together spiky electrical test device that could find uses out with the automotive industry. I'm guessing it's aimed at the automotive industry. The 3 to 36 volts is quite generous. It could also find rudimentary use in troubleshooting through control panels, but it is kind of designed to clip on to a, a chassis or chassis, if you prefer, um, for the sort of zero volt reference. But that's it. Interesting little circuit. Novel. Just not sure what that diode's for. Quite strange.